In this video, I am going to cover SQS integration with AWS Lambda. By the way, if you don't know, SQS was the first service launched by AWS even before S3 and EC2. It's a very popular service for decoupling the applications and using Lambda and SQS combination, you can build powerful event-driven solutions. So Lambda polls SQS and processes the messages and these messages are read in batches and Lambda function is invoked once for each batch. So you define this batch size in your Lambda configuration and you can specify the batch size between 1 and 10,000 and default value for the batch is 10. This is the example payload received by your Lambda. So you can see that uh, Lambda receive a list of messages here but here in this example I've shown only one message inside records each record has its own message id which uniquely identify the message then it has body which contains your message and apart from that you can specify other metadata like you know message attribute the event source and event source arn the region also so this is the structure of a message and you can have multiple messages inside records Let's look at the important aspect while working with SQS. Messages in SQS are not processed individually. As I explained earlier, they are processed in batches and you have to define the number of messages in batches, be it, you know, 10, 20 or 50, or uh, it's up to you and your use case. And let's say once the batch is processed, so those messages should be deleted from SQS to avoid reprocessing. And when we talk about Lambda with SQS, you don't have to worry about deleting the messages if you are using Lambda as a consumer because Lambda automatically handles this thing for you. You don't have to worry about firing SDK calls to SQS to delete the processed messages, which is one of the advantage of using Lambda as a consumer to SQS. Now consider a scenario wherein you define batch size of 10 and uh, all the messages are processed successfully. That's a happy path, right? But let's say if one of the message out of 10 fails, so this can cause your Lambda function to process that batch again and again and might lead to the duplicate data. That's why, you know, I have covered uh, item potency as one of the Lambda's best practice in my previous video, which you can check. How you can avoid this particular failure scenario AWS gives us one feature called reporting batch item failures. By using this feature, what you can do is you can return the message IDs or the failed messages and only those messages will be kept in SQS and others would be deleted. In short, the successful messages would be deleted and the unsuccessful would be left over. So in this example, you can see that we have five messages here. When all these messages are, are passed to the Lambda, and let's say out of these five, this message is failed, then by using reporting batch item failure, only this message would again be processed. These four would be deleted from the SQS. So this is a really cool feature. So you don't have to you know, worry about uh, deleting each message after processing to avoid the duplication. Apart from report batch item failure, there are two other configurations which you should be keeping in mind while using Lambda with SQS. So the first is uh, batch size and second is uh, batch window. So batch size I have already covered in previous slides and it defines the number of messages that you want your Lambda to process at once. Default value is 10. This batch size cannot be a large number and at the same time you cannot keep this as small as uh, 1. So why keeping one as batch size is problematic because uh, Lambda will encounter a lot of messages and it can keep on creating new Lambda instances. Hence, you might face throttling issues because ultimately Lambdas are also limited in numbers, right? So keeping a large batch size can also cause problems because Lambda has its own limitations of uh, 15 minutes window plus Payload size cannot be more than 6 GB. So yeah, I mean, you have to carefully choose this batch size. 
Coming to the second point, uh, which is batch window, it is a time that you want to wait before invoking the function. You can say that this has to do with the SQS polling. So by default, the value is zero, which means Lambda service will keep on polling to get the batch of messages from SQS. And if it gets the messages, they will be passed to the function. If not, it will retry again. So you have to carefully decide the size of batch window also as you don't want uh, any unnecessary polling happening, thereby increasing the billing from your Lambda function and SQS. If one of the message from batch fails, Lambda will keep on trying that message until one of these two happen. So either the message is deleted from SQS after completing its retention period of 14 days. By the way, this 14 days retention period is configurable. 14 days is the max value. Secondly, if you have configured dead letter queue and kept the tree dry policy to a certain extent, otherwise, you know, your Lambda will keep on trying SQS, hence causing unnecessary billing from Lambda invocation or SQS polling and unnecessary CloudWatch logs. This is always the best practice to create a DLQ with SQS. And let's say you can keep your read write policy, let's say five, your message would be picked up by Lambda for only five times. After five times, if your message again lands in SQS, it will send that message to DLQ. So yeah, this is a recommended practice guys in the production systems. Let me show you this particular option of DLQ in AWS console. So this is my SQS console and I have one queue test queue. And if I show you here, I have the advanced configuration. You can check that uh, my retention period is four days here. So if I scroll down, you can see that we have dead letter queue option here. I don't have any dead letter queue. So if I click on edit here, you can see that we have one option here, dead letter queue. This is optional, this is not mandatory, but this is the recommended practice. So if I go inside this, you can see that we have this option disabled. If I enable this, it will ask me to choose the queue ARN and it will ask me the maximum receive. Let's say if I decide five, the message will come to SQS only five times. So when I say come to SQS means message can be picked from the SQS by Lambda, but once that message fails, after completing its visibility timeout, it lands again into the SQS, right? After five times, message would be sent to this queue, which you provide here. So we can go to the demo now. I'll open my IntelliJ. So this is my class in which I have implemented handle request method. And you can see SQS event is the input to us. And we would be passing back SQS batch response. Why we are passing SQS batch response? Because we are covering batch item failures. So this is the return type which is supported with batch item failures. This is the request event and we would be fetching the records from SQS event and iterating all the records inside a batch in this for loop. So we will be going through messages one by one. For the demo purpose, I'm just checking if the body contains fail and in that case, I'm throwing a runtime exception which would be caught in this exception block. And you can see that we are adding the message ID for that particular message inside batch item failure list. And that is being passed back, you know, in the SQS batch response. Yeah, this is the small code that I've written for processing SQS messages in the batch. And for deploying this code, since we are using Java, so we can't edit inline, right? We have to upload the code to AWS management console on Lambda. So for doing that, I use uh, CDK by writing few lines of code, you can actually reduce your manual work. So you can see here, I'm creating a function with the runtime Java 11 handler, memory size, timeout. This is my function name and the code would be from function.jar, which we will be building. So yeah, this is it. These are the two of my classes and for automating the deployment process, I have written this sh file wherein you can see that I'll be going to functions and calling MVN clean package. Then inside the infra folder, I'm calling CDK deploy. And if you're not familiar with CDK, you can go through my previous videos. I would highly recommend you to start using CDKs. Yeah, this is it. And I can show you the project structure. 
we have functions and infra two modules here and we have deploy.sh which i can directly run maybe i can just click on this play button and it will start doing the deployment you can see that maven build is success now it will go to infra and call cdk deploy and by the way as part of this ambient clean package i'm writing jar file into assets so that you know it will be picked up here if you can see and now my stack is being created if you can see our stack is deployed i can go to now aws console to check if lambda is created so if you see this uh, function belongs to an application because we created this using cdk for this to work with sqs we need to create a queue i'll open sqs now so i will click on create queue here this would be a standard queue i can call this as a test queue and i'll keep visibility timeout as it is retention period 4 days and all the default setting as it is and i'll click on create queue if i show this lambda triggers you can see we don't have any lambda triggers as of now but we want to trigger lambda if any message comes here in this queue so what i can do is i can either click on this configure lambda function trigger or i can go to lambda and click on add trigger so i'll choose this one and if i select this i can choose sqs here uh, you have select the queue i have test queue here and then there is an option for batch size which i already covered in the theory part so i'll keep the default as 10 and batch window i can keep 0 this is in seconds if i expand additional settings uh, you can see report batch item failure i want this to be allowed and i don't want any event filtering as of now and i'll click on add but before that so if you read this in order to read from sqs trigger your execution role must have proper permission which means our lambda execution role which is default as of now should have permission to read from sqs but we have not given any permission right if i try clicking on add i should get an error so you can see that error occurred because provided execution role does not have permission to call receive message on sqs so first of all i'll go to my configuration here and i'll go to permission i'll click on this execution role and this will open i am console now you can see we have basic execution role and if i talk about basic so basic has only permission to write logs to cloudwatch and i need to add permission into this so you can click on attach policies i want to attach sqs policies and if you see here we have three types of sqs policy one is full access then is read only then you have queue execution role so i need this queue execution role and if you see this we have receive message role here i can click on here click on attach policy now this is done i can go to my lambda back and click on add trigger again i'll choose sqs zero here additional settings report batch item failures click on add here so yes you have to select the queue also click on add yeah it's done and if you see the details here you can see the batch size here batch window is none because i selected zero then we have report batch item failures now this is done so to test this i'll go to queue and uh, i'll click on send and receive messages you can pass any text message or json message i'll let's say pass this json uh, where i have three attributes and i'll click on send message so you can see your our message has been sent if i go to my lambda go to monitor i can go to cloud watch logs so we already have this execution logs if i open this you can see our lambda got this message a j101 pass and if i try sending again something let's say chinam 102 click on send message that's all also sent right yeah you can see here message body so you can write your custom logic here once you receive this message and you can do whatever you want now let's test one scenario wherein you pass result value as fail and let's see how that goes if i go to my sqs again let's say i pass fail here now if you remember the logic that we have written 
if the body contains fail then the message should throw runtime exception right i'll click on send message now cloud watch refresh this if you can see here we got the message body as fail so this runtime exception occurred now what will happen is this lambda will keep on retrying this message until this message gets expired in the sqs or this message is sent to dlq if i let's say try after a couple of minutes you can see again you know this message fail then again fail then again fail so this will keep on trying so you have to build a error handling mechanism whenever you have lambda as a consumer from services like sqs or kinesis so this is it from this tutorial i hope this is clear to you this lambda and sqs integration i hope you like this video and if you like this please subscribe to my channel thanks for watching bye